Hey everyone, in this video I'm going to walk you through step by step on how to create your first signup form. But let's address something quickly. Lots of e-commerce merchants still think that pop-ups can be annoying for their visitors and they don't perform well. Well that's just a myth. In fact, subscribers are three times more likely to convert than your average e-commerce visitor. So we want to make sure that we're collecting as many of those email addresses as possible. So whenever somebody spends a certain amount of time on your e-commerce store, you're going to get a pop-up saying get 10% off your first order. All you have to do is enter your email address in exchange for that. All right, now we're going to jump right into the setup. All right, so here we are on the dashboard. And what we're going to do is jump into the form section and create a new form. And here we have a lot of templates that we have pre-filled already. And we can filter those on the left based on type, form settings, and, and etc. As for the type, I can explain what these are. So the pop-up is essentially what pops up on your store. An embedded page is a part of the page that is dedicated for the signup. A landing page is essentially a dedicated page for your uh, visitors to sign up. So for now, we're going to use a pop-up. We're gonna select that. And we are collecting email and SMS subscribers, so we're gonna select that. I like this template, so I'm going to use it. All right, so let me explain what you're seeing here. So on the left side, you can drag and drop multiple elements over here, whatever fits your style, whatever you want. It could be a date, it could be a radio button, it could be a checkbox. If you want to collect, for example, gender of, of uh, someone, you can include a radio button and let them choose male, female, non-binary, etc. And now let's check out the right section, which is essentially just general settings. And we're going to select theme settings for now because we want to change the style up a bit. So in here, we can create a form layout. Well, rather not create, but adjust it. And we can select a background image to be on the left side, right side, up, up above. And the form position can also be changed. There's multiple options to choose from, and it's very easy to change anything. So as for the display type, as you, as you saw in the previous screen, we can create multiple types. But here we can just actually change it with one press. We can change it to landing. We can change it to embed. We can change it to pop-up. But for now, we're going to just keep it a pop-up. Uh, we can also adjust the colors. It's not going to change much this time because, well, it's already looking pretty good. But we can try it. For example, the close button. If we don't want it to be black, we can make it white, for example. There you go. Now it's changed. But let's reset it to black. And we can also have three buttons in each of the forms. And these buttons can be all adjusted individually. So for now, we're going to just keep this. But for example, we can make it rounded, completely square, etc. All right, let's talk about the copy a little bit. So essentially, a pop-up is a bit of an annoyance, let's be real. So we want to keep it as short as possible and don't waste any of your visitors' time. So don't miss out, just a clear headline, subscribe to get exclusive deals, just straight to the point. Maybe if you want to include something witty or funny in there, that might be necessary. Uh, not necessary, but it would be beneficial. And maybe something like those discount codes won't redeem themselves. Which might be a bit pushy, but let's just go with it. Let's say this is on brand. So the form is already looking pretty good, but let's try adding these blocks individually so you would know how to do it yourself. Let's get rid of these and just leave the subscribe button and the text. So we are collecting the email address. We can add it here and we can adjust it. Let's say, don't even enter your email. Just no label at all. Just a very clear little thing here. Phone number. Also, let's not include the label over here just to make it clear. And now when you're collecting phone numbers, you must include the legal consent block because it is required. Otherwise, you would not be able to proceed with the creation of your form. So we have the GDPR compliant forms and TCPA compliant forms. You can choose either one and you must include your privacy policy link. It should automatically pull this from your website, but if it doesn't, let's just enter it ourselves. So in this case, it would be omnison.com slash policy. There we go. So we have the basic form. 
So what you want to collect essentially comes down to you. But if there are too many steps to go through, the visitor is likely not going to be able to subscribe. Like if you're asking for email only, the likelihood of that happening is pretty high. If you're asking for phone, email address, gender, birthday, and so on, so on, the churn rate is going to be pretty high and the subscribe rate is going to plummet. So how do we solve this? All right, let's say that we're collecting email and mobile phone numbers. So what we can do is create a multi-step form, which we can do by just clicking this option over here, add option, next step. So we are splitting the form into two separate steps. So in the first one, let's go ahead and ask for the email address. So let's get rid of this block. Let's get rid of this block and then jump to the step two. And here we go. Enter your number and submit. So what this does is essentially split the form into two separate things. If in step one, the user enters his email address and then moves on to the step two. In the step two, if he doesn't really want to enter his phone number, he is just going to leave the form. But you still win in this case because you already got his email address and he is subscribed. So even though he didn't enter his mobile phone, it's okay. You already got his email. So this is one version of the multi-step form. The other version is getting your customers to say yes. So in the first step, you can show, do you want like a 50% discount or something? Something along those lines. And you can have two buttons that say, yes, I do, or no, thank you. No, thank you closes the form. Yes, please moves on to the next step. So getting the customer to say yes to that form is gonna increase the chances of them signing up. I'm not gonna create it right now, but with the power of editing, we're gonna put it on screen right now so you can see it. All right, if you decide to change your mind, you can just delete the step two by clicking over here, delete, and the form is back to normal. Basically, success page is being shown to people who have subscribed successfully. And the subscribe page is ob obviously going to be shown to people that have already entered their email address and just enter it again maybe on a separate session or something. So what we can do here is we can also add a discount block over here. If you're offering a discount in your form, you can just include it in the success page. So what you can do is just drag the discount block over here and then you would need to add the discount manually. Now this cannot be pulled automatically, so you would need to go to your e-commerce store admin page and create the discount that you would use specifically here. Let's see. This is basically the coupon code that I supposedly created. And this is what's gonna pop up. We can also include this in the subscribe page. Although the discount page doesn't exist, we can just include a text saying, By the way, if you want to learn more about multi-step forms, we are leaving the full guide in the description below. Now let's investigate what we have here on the right part. So with the audience management page, we are going to apply some tags, specific tags to people that sign up using this specific form. So in this case, if a user signed up, uh, he's going to get a form subscriber tag and an email SMS capture tag. So you can adjust it as you want. It's really up to you. And what double opt-in below it means is if you really want to create a very, very high quality list, what you're going to do is enable the double opt-in. Now what it does is essentially when the user signs up here, he's going to be sent a link in his email address where he's going to fill out yet another form confirming that he does in fact want to opt-in. Now this is not used very often but if you really want to avoid spammers and low quality lists this is the approach you would like to take so let's go to the next one scheduling so this is pretty self-explanatory when you want to start when you want to end choose either way now display now i'm going to create a pretty standard settings over here so the regular way to do this is set the time on page from six to 10 seconds. Six if you want to be a bit more aggressive and 10 if you want to be on the lighter side. So for this one, let's just add eight and let's also enable the exit intent. So the exit intent pops up uh, the form when the user intends to leave, basically if the mouse leaves the borders of your website, for example. All right, so next up we have targeting. So in targeting, you want to maybe create different forms for different kind of pages on your, on your website. So for example, if you have the product page, if you have the about us page, about your pricing page, you can create different forms for each one of these websites 
and apply them to these specific URLs specifically. And now for visibility. So you can also separate. For example, if you want to create a form specifically for desktop users and a one form specifically for mobile users, because let me show you an example. If you go to here, this is the desktop view that we're viewing right now. If you go to the mobile view, the picture is gone now, right? So if you want to maybe adjust it a little bit and make the different version of this specific form for mobile users only, you can do that right over here. So for example, we can just set it to desktop only in this case. And as for the frequency, you can set a specific amount of days for the form to reappear again for your specific visitors or subscribers. So in this case, it's just one day. Okay, and lastly, the A-B testing feature. So this is where things get kind of interesting, which is a bit more advanced. Therefore, we're not going to include it in this video. But instead, you can click over here and watch a video where we covered this feature in depth. Or you can find it in the description as well. Okay, and I think we're ready to launch the form. So it's going to appear on the whole website in this case. So the form is pretty much set to go and let's enable it. And now I'm going to open an incognito window and check out the store. Okay, and here we are. This is the form that we have just created. And the last thing for this video is you probably wonder about what a good signup rate is for the pop-up. So two to 3% is a good average. Now it's all over the place. It differs greatly based on industry, based on what type of store you have, whether it's a one product store or if you have 3000 different products. But generally I would even say 1.5 to 3% is good. Now, of course, you can always play around and experiment with copy, with the triggers to try and improve. You can improve all the way from 6 to 10%, but 2 to 3% is generally very healthy. And that's it for this video. See you in the next one.